Hi, in this video we will give an introduction to LabVIEW. So in this video we will cover the following topics. Installation of LabVIEW, what is LabVIEW, the LabVIEW environment, some basic LabVIEW programming, plotting in LabVIEW, creating and using sub-VIs in LabVIEW, creating and using formulas in LabVIEW, using the formula node, and some tips and tricks. And you need the following software, you need the LabVIEW uh, professional development system, um, I recommend the 32-bits edition, and LabVIEW software can be downloaded from this link, but of course you need a valid uh, serial number in addition, but you can use it for free uh, in uh, 14 days. So LabVIEW is a multi-purpose programming language. You can use it for uh, different platforms. So you can use uh, LabVIEW on Linux, Macintosh, and Windows. And you can use it on embedded platforms. And you can create different kind of programs. You can use um, um, flowchart programming, text programming. You can use it for simulation, etc. So LabVIEW, it's, uh, it's uh, quite fun to use. It's a graphical programming language. So it's very different from traditional programming language like Basic, C Sharp, Maple, MATLAB, MathScript, whatever. So it's more like a drawing program than a programming language. So this makes it very easy to use for those who are not programmers or not uh, don't like programming so much. And it's an excellent tool when you use hardware and when you need to take measurements uh, because the vendor of um, LabVIEW, National Instruments, also creates lots of hardware you can use together with LabVIEW. So it's very fun and makes you very creative to use LabVIEW. Here we see an uh, example of a program created in LabVIEW. Uh, so LabVIEW has the same things as all the programming language, but it's, it, it's, it's in a graphical way. So here you see a comment, here you see a while loop, here you see a local variable, this one is a sub-VI or a function or method as we call it in other programming language. Here we have a sequence structure, so everything inside here goes into a specific se sequence. We have arrays, we have properties. And in LabVIEW, they are called property nodes. We have constants, etc. So we have all we need to create uh, powerful programs. You can also use LabVIEW to connect to all kinds of hardware, especially since LabVIEW is created by National Instruments, and also National Instruments create lots of hardware and DAC devices. Here we have some examples of hardware you can connect and use together with the LabVIEW. Here is some other modules that is handy to use in addition to the LabVIEW core programming environment. Uh, LabVIEW has um, dozens of different modules you can install and use. And this is some of the most used modules, LabVIEW math script module, um, which makes LabVIEW a small uh, MATLAB editor. Or we have LabVIEW control design and simulation module we can use to for control and simulation purposes. We also have the Doc MX driver, which is which you need to use if you want to connect a national instruments hardware together with LabVIEW. Now we will give an introduction to the LabVIEW environment. So the LabVIEW environment, you start LabVIEW on. Uh, from the menu system in in uh, in your operating system and then this uh, window pops up and then you can choose file and new vi in order to start to use labview then uh, two windows will pop up a gray window called the front panel this is where you create the user interface or your graphical user interface 
and this white window is called the block diagram. In this window you will create your code. You can easily switch between those two windows using the Ctrl E command. And also both these windows are stored in one single file that ends on .vi. VI stands for Virtual Instruments and that's the extension for LabVIEW program. So let's try this example. So now I open LabVIEW. And this window pops up and then we can go to File, New VI to create a new LabVIEW program. And then we have this white window, which is the block diagram. And then we have the, this gray window, which is the front panel. So here you can right click to create your graphical user interface. Like this. And then you can click Ctrl E to switch to the block diagram where you actually create our code. So let's just create a simple code. So let's add this one and then add two like this. Like this. So now we have created our first very simple library program. So let's go to the front panel to see what's happening. So here we can enter a value 3 and then run the program using this white run arrow. And you see 3 plus 2 equals to 5. So this is a very simple lab view program. So on the front panel, when you right click, we have this controls palette, where you find all the graphical user interface objects you can use in our program. You can also click on customize and change visible palettes and then just select all and click OK. Also the same on the block diagram, we can right click here and then we have this functions palette where we have all uh, the features we need to create the code. So here we have uh, different loops. Here we have arrays functions, and uh, here we have numeric functions less, like uh, addition, multiply, subtract, divide, etc. So here also we can click on customize, change visible palettes, and then select all and click OK. You can also click on this pin in order to have it uh, in front all the time or close it and then we need to right click and then it pops up again. So we can pin it like this. Same on the front panel. Right click to show the controls palette and you can pin it clicking on this button. So that's all. This is our very first lab programming. So let's uh, create some more library programs. We will start with this uh, simple program where we just add two numbers like this. So we, on our front panel we create two uh, numeric uh, controls and one numeric indicator. And then we create our program we will just add these two numbers together like this. So let's try this in LabVIEW. So here we start on our front panel. We create two numeric controls. Like this. And then <coughs> we need one numeric indicator. We find it here. So you see the difference between numeric controls, which is uh, we can enter values inside here when the program runs or before the program runs while the numeric indicator is read only so it has this uh, gray background so let's start creating the program so we switch to the block time using control e in this case we just should just add those two together so we find here in the numeric palette this add function 
and then we just need to wire those together like this and then the output should go into this indicator like this so now we should be able to run our program we can enter some values here 3 5 and then when we run the program you see the answer should be 8 in this case so let's continue with a little bit more advanced program in this case we are going to convert from celsius to fahrenheit uh, using this formula so here we see our front panel we have one uh, numeric control and one numeric indicator and here we have created the code for converting from celsius to fahrenheit so let's create this example inside labview so then we just open a blank vi in labview where we have the block diagram and the front panel so let's start with the front panel so we create a numeric control and we can name it tc for temperature celsius and we create another one tf for the temperature in fahrenheit and then we go to our block diagram to create the code then in this case according to for the formula we need uh, a multiplication a divider and a ad addition sign let's start creating the code so the output here should go into the upper input like this and here we need to divide 9 and 5 so then you can just right click on the upper input and create a constant and then you can enter 9 and here on the lower one you can create another constant and set 5 and then this one we will multiply with this and the output here should go like this and then we can add 32 so you just right click create constant and then you can enter 32 and the output here should be the temperature in celsius need to change this to indicator like this and now our program should be finished finished let's go to our uh, front panel and then we can enter some value here 25 degrees celsius and then click this run button in order to execute the program you see according temperature in Fahrenheit is 77 like this another thing we typically need in our program is a while loop because in this case when you run the program the program stops almost uh, immediately because there is no while loop here so let's just create a while loop in addition so then we can go to our block diagram right click structures and select the while loop so you just select the while loop and then we click with the mouse to drag the while loop all over the code like this and then in addition in order to stop the while loop we typically need a button on our front panel so we can create a stop button like this and then we can wire the stop button to this this one like this so now when we stop click the stop button this loop will stop and the program will stop so let's try to run this program but in addition we, before we do that we also we should also add, always add a timer so we can use this wait function where you find here timing wait and then typically we can right click here create constant and then you can select 100 millisecond like this 
And now we can try to run our program. And now you see the program runs until you stop, click the stop button like this. And now it stops. And now we can enter or change the values here during runtime. So let's change this to 20 degrees Celsius. And then you can just click outside here. And then this one is automatically calculated by the program. So you can change it here. And the, and the Fahrenheit, Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit degrees is automatically calculated um, in the program. And this we can change this how much we want to, like this, until we stop the program with the stop button. LabVIEW has also lots of functions for built-in help. So you can click the Control H but, uh, key combination, and then we get this small conte context help window. So we can click on different objects, and then you can get help on the different objects. So now I click on the add uh, function, and then you see it has two inputs and one output. Now I click on the while loop, and then you see you get information about the while loop, and we can click detail help in, in order to get even more help. You can do the same on the front panel. Here we click on this um, control, and then we get information about it, the data type, etc. Click on the stop button. You see it's a stop button. It's a boolean, so it either has the true or false value. Also, when we have uh, done something wrong in our program, in this case, you see how this uh, functional functionality that is not working properly. So you see our run button is uh, is, so, uh, is a so-called broken arrow, and then you can click on this one, and then we get a list of errors, and then you can click in this list to find out more information about where the error is. So you can click on this one, and click on the error, and you can also get some detailed information about what's wrong in our program. So here a wire can only be connected to only one data source, it says. And then I just need to delete this one, and the program works again. So you can click on the Run button. In LabVIEW, we have also lots of different uh, data types. So, so far we have used this uh, numeric uh, control and indicators, which is a, uh, by default is a double, but you can also select it to be an integer. We have Boolean controls and variables. We have string controls and indicators, and we have arrays, etc. So let's try some of these data types inside LabVIEW. So here, we right click here on the controls, and then we have this uh, numeric control, and then you see this is of type double, and it has this specific color. If we want to change it to an integer, we can just right click on it, and select uh, representation, and then you can select an um, integer 32, and then you see this is changing to an integer. So now we can just enter integer values. We have booleans, so we have different kind of booleans. We have used the button, which is a boolean. We have different push buttons which is also boolean. We have uh, string controls, which we can enter a text. Hello. And we have lots of different data types. We have also some arrays. So here we have an empty array, but we can put any kind of data type into the array. So let's put this numeric control into the array and then we will get an array of, of numeric controls like this. LabVIEW is also an excellent tool if you want to plot some values. So in 
this example here we just create a code in this case you just use a random generator in order to create a very simple temperature simulator and we want to plot the values in a in a chart like this and here we see the results in, inside the chart and then we click a stop button and then the program will stop so let's create this simple plotting example in uh, LabVIEW so we start with our front panel we click right click to get the controls palette and here on the graph we find the waveform chart so we just click it and find it and place it on the front panel like this and next we want to have a stop button in order to stop the program we could also show the values inside a thermometer so let's find uh, this one so click here under numeric and then we have this thermometer like this and we can make it bigger just drag it like this So this is our front panel, then we want to create the code for this program, so let's switch to the block diagram. And then we want to create this simple uh, temperature simulator, so we use this random functionality. So we click here on right click the function palettes, numeric, and then we find a random number here, and just click it like this, and then we need this um, multiple eye block we need uh, this one subtract and then we need the add block like this in this program we also have an uh, upper and lower which you can so that uh, simulator should be between an, a lower limit and an upper limit so we can just find a numeric control we can call it lower and then we create a new one call it upper limit this one lower limit now let's start creating the logic so then divide oh sorry take upper limit minus lower limit and then we multiply it with this random value like this and then output added to the lower limit and then you can just use the arrows to make the program a little bit nicer and the output here should be plotted so we can put it into the plot and also we want to show the value inside the thermometer like this so now our program should be finished you can also right click on the objects to select the visible items and then we can select label so you know what this this function is actually doing so let's start the program uh, of course we need of course a while loop so we need to find the while loop drag it over the code like this we need to connect the stop button to this loop condition and in the addition we don't want the loop to go too fast to uh, to take all the processor uh, power so we just also want to use this wait function and then we just right click create constant and set this value to 100 milliseconds now our program should be finished so let's try the program go to the front panel click the run button 
I'll see about something. Yeah, before we start the program, we should set this uh, lower limit. So, assuming we want to create a simulator that goes between 20 degrees and 50 degrees Celsius, so we have the lower limit and the upper limit. And then we can start the application clicking the run button. And you see, we're getting values between. Uh, 20 and 50 degrees and then we see all the history here in the waveform chart and then we also in addition in the thermometer see the the last value like this this is how we make a very simple uh, chart in uh, labview in addition to charts we have also something called graphs so in this example shows uh, the difference between the, the chart that we just used and the graph. So typically we use the chart inside a while loop. Uh, in this case I have added a graph outside the while loop. So let's do this uh, code inside Labio. So it, in addition to the chart I just right click graph and find this waveform graph and paste it next to the chart, like this, and then we go to our code, and then we wire from here to the chart, sorry, to the graph like this. And you see here, you have some error in our program, so you just need to right click on this, this one and select uh, tunnel mode and indexing like this. And then we can run the program. You see here in the chart we see uh, the values changing in each iteration in the loop but here we don't see anything until we click the stop button and then you see all the values is plotted in the graph as well. So then this is the main difference between a chart. We typically use it inside a loop to draw uh, new values at the end, but while a graph plots an array of uh, values. So you see this, this, this line is a little bit thicker than this one. So here we have single scalar values that is added to the chart, while here we plot the entire uh, array with the values in one operation. That's why we don't get any values here until we click the stop button and the loop stops and then the code goes uh, here and, and, and then we are plotting the values inside the graph. So let's summarize charts versus graphs. So charts remembers the history, new points are added to the end of the plot and we use it inside a while loop or a for loop that we will learn about later and one new point is added each time inside the loop while a graph you plot all the data at once typically an array with data and you typically use it outside a loop either a for loop or a while loop now we will learn how to create and use sub vi's in a lab view so sub vi is um, it's like a method or function uh, in other programming language. So in this case, we have a simple program with a while loop, and then we have a temperature in Celsius, and we want to convert the temperature to Fahrenheit. And then in this case, we have made a sub VI, and then we use this sub VI in our program. So this sub VI, sub VI has one input, which is the temperature in Celsius, and the output is the temperature in Fahrenheit. So the code for the survey is inside this uh, small piece of block. So here we see the survey where we have used this simple formula to convert the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let's start creating this survey. So now I have opened LabVIEW. Here we have uh, the front panel and here we have the block diagram where we create the code. So let's start with the block diagram 
in this case we need a numeric control as an input so this is uh, TC temperature in Celsius and the output should be a numeric indicator should be the temperature in Fahrenheit like this then we have the input and output of this survey or a function if you may call it so here we define the inputs and outputs of the survey you can right click on this one and show patterns and then we have depending on how many inputs and outputs we are we can select the proper pattern in this case we have one input and one output and then we can select this one so then you can right click on the input here and then on the input control to link those together and then you do the same with the output so you just click on output terminal and then this TF uh, indicator like this so then you, how you see we have linked the input and the output like this let's go to the uh, block diagram to create the code so we just right click to find uh, the proper uh, blocks we need here so we need uh, multiplication multiply we need uh, subtract and we need to add so then just start creating the formula so you can use the arrows to just fine-tune the blocks like this here we can right click create constant nine, nine. Here, right click, create, constant, 5. And this output should go to the input here. And here we should add with uh, 32, so create, constant, 32. And the output should go to TF, like this. I guess this is the code for this survey. Next, we can save it. So you click just File, Save, or hit Control S, and then we find a proper name. So let's just call it Convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, like this. I click OK, and then next. Here we also see an icon, so you typically need to create a proper icon for our um, survey. So you can click on this one, double click, then we can use these drawing tools. Here we can add the text. Here we have lots of icons you can use. So let's just make it simple. Then we can have TC to something like this or we can also add some icons so let's see if we find some uh, proper icons this one could be nice to use like this and then we have made a proper icon and then you can click OK and you see the icon has changed uh, to this icon we just created so now our survey is finished we just need to create our main program like this in this case we just create a simple graphical user interface where we convert this temperature in Celsius to Fahrenheit so let's create this uh, this program as well so then we are back in the lab view I just created a new blank VI where we have the front panel and the block diagram and you can use ctrl E to switch between them so let's create our front panel so here on the numeric we have lots of uh, controls you can use you can use this uh, vertical slider make it a little bigger so this is 
should be the temperature in Celsius. Then you can use one of the others, this one, to show the temperature in Fahrenheit. Make it a little bigger, like this. And the next, we can start creating the code. In this case, we should use um, our sub BI. So then we can just right click here in the functions palette. We can select a VI and then we can find our sub BI. So just place it here. And then you see if we click Ctrl H. You get a help window where you see this survey we just created has one input and one output. So just just connect those together like this. And then let's see if our program works. So just here we can have four degrees Celsius and we want to convert it to Fahrenheit. You can just also change the scale here. So now this one goes from 0 to 10 and this one from 0 to 100. So let's see how 4 degrees Celsius and we want to convert it to Fahrenheit. We just click the run button and you see using the survey we convert the degrees, the degrees in Celsius to degrees in Fahrenheit using the survey. So let's add a loop as well. So you find a while loop. And you take the while loop over the code we just created. You want to use a timer. So you always should use a timer in a while loop. We set 100 milliseconds. And the loop should go until we push a stop button or something. So just let's create a stop button. So we find a stop button here, and then we can wire this stop button to this uh, loop condition, like this. Now the program will uh, run until we stop this button. So let's try our program now. Let's hit the run button, and then we can slide this one. And you see the temperature is um, instantly converted to Fahrenheit. So that's how we create uh, sub-VIs in LabVIEW, it's quite easy. And also if you want to change the sub-VI, we can just double click it to open it. And then we go into the front panel and we can click Ctrl E to open the block diagram. And then we can make some changes and close it and then run our code once more. Here is an other example where we have used the same uh, sub-VI many times in the same code. So here we used the first survey here to convert uh, the temperature in Oslo in Celsius to Fahrenheit like this. So then you can use reuse the same survey many times in, in the same program. So let's try this example as well. So we just start with a blank VI and here we have the front panel. So let's just start lots of controls and indicators. So here we have uh, Oslo and the temperature in Celsius. And then here we have want to convert it. To Fahrenheit like this. We can also create uh, more of these. So now I created Oslo, Stockholm, London and Paris. The temperature in degrees Celsius and we have these same indicators where we have the temperature in Fahrenheit. So let's go to our block diagram and then you see we have this uh, here on the block diagram and then we can just use our sub -VI. So let's find our sub -VI, select the VI, find the sub -VI, like this 
and then you can just copy it four times like this and then we connect the input and output so that this should be an input and output goes to this this is input goes to this and the output goes to this Now we are ready to run our code, so go back, go back to the front panel, click Ctrl E, and then just write some values here. In Oslo there is 22 degrees, Stockholm is 18 degrees Celsius, in London there is 25, and in Paris there is 30 degrees. And then you can just click the run button, and then you see, using the survey we are able to convert the, the temperature uh, in Celsius to Fahrenheit using these surveys. And then you can of course double click the survey to see the code like this. So this is how we use and create surveys in LabVIEW. Here we see an, uh, another example where we have used survey and plotting in the same uh, VI. So here we have this Celsius to Fahrenheit survey we just created, and here we ha have another survey. survey. Just, this is just a temperature simulator, and then in this case, this one uh, simulates the temperature in uh, Celsius, and then we use this survey to convert it to Fahrenheit, and then we plot both the Celsius temperature and the Fahrenheit temperature in the same chart like this. So then you should, uh, based on your knowledge now, you should be able to create such a VI in LabVIEW. So let's, you should know by your own, uh, try to make this example. Now we will learn how to, uh, to write formulas inside LabVIEW. So in the previous example, we just implemented this uh, simple formula where you convert the temperature in Celsius to Fahrenheit using this simple formula and then we implemented the formula using this uh, this simple lab code but if you have more complicated formulas or many formulas typically it is better to use the formula node in the inside lab view. so the formula node is very useful for mathematical expressions and, and also in simulations uh, so the formula node Inside the formula node, we can write ordinary C code, and then you can easily implement one or more equations or formulas inside the node. And then you can just add inputs and outputs uh, like this. So then let's try to create this same example, this Celsius to Fahrenheit formula, using a formula node in LabVIEW. Then we have just open LabVIEW and a blank VI in the LabVIEW, and then let's find the formula node. So you just right click to find the functions palette, structures, and then we find uh, the formula node here. And then you can just drag it as large as we want it, like this. And then you can just go inside and start entering the code. So the output should be the temperature in Fahrenheit. equals to 9 multiplied with uh, TC and this should be divided by 5 and add 32 and then we have the formula and then we can right click here on the border to create an input so the input should be TC and then we can right click on output and the output should be TF like this. And then we can go to our front panel to create the inputs and outputs. So we have one input, should be the TC and the output. Just use a numeric indicator, should be TF like this. 
and then we can wire the input control to this input like this and then we can do the same with the output So then we are almost finished and then let's try to run the code but you see we get an error here and you can click on it and then you see here the formula load missing semicolon so since this is C code we need to add a semicolon at the end of each line so now you see uh, the program is ready to run so you can go to our front panel we can add a value here 22 degrees celsius should then be converted to fahrenheit like this so this is how we use the formula node uh, to enter formulas inside labview since this inside the formula node we use ordinary c code we can also use variables etc inside our code here so let's assuming we want to add a variable an internal variable k so then you can just define the variable this is a float k like this on a semicolon and then you can set the value k should be equal to 2 semicolon like this and then we can use this internal variable in our formula let's just add the k like this and then you can run the program like this so this is how we use formula node and then you can use internal uh, variables and then you can use connect input terminals and output terminals like this so so far we have learned how to use the while loop inside labview but in labview we have uh, more loops and structures so in addition to the while loop that we have used, we have ordinary for loops, we have a case structure. A case structure is like an if-else sentence in other programming languages. And we have what we call a seeking structure. And all these loops and structures, we find them in the structures palette inside LabVIEW. So we know how to uh, use the while loop. We just use the while loop and then we add the code that should be running inside the while loop like this and then typically we add a timer and a button in order to stop the loop uh, here we see a uh, sorry a for loop uh, a for loop in uh, so a while loop stops until uh, run until you stop a button or something click a button but a for loop just runs a specific number of times in this case the for loop it runs 10 times and then it stops so let's try to make a simple for loop in labview so we are back in labview and we have the just created us blank vi and we have the front panel and we have the block diagram so let's just right click structures and find the for loop like this and then we want the for loop to run 10 times so you can just right click on this this uh, n right click create a constant and then just type 10 and then you can go to our front panel and then just create a simple indicator and we want in this simple example we can just wire this this one so this is the uh, iteration so this one every time it uh, we go into the loop this uh, in the beginning this is zero and then it's one two three four five etc so just let's connect this one to the numeric indicator and in that addition we could add a timer so let's in this case just add a timer for thousand milliseconds then let's try to run this program and see what's happening and then we can run it and then you see it goes into the for loop and then increases the number with one in each iteration so it started with uh, zero and then up to nine, uh, nine because uh, 
loop was running 10 times. So this is how we uh, create for loops and use for loops inside LabVIEW. Next, we want to create and use a case structure inside LabVIEW. So a case structure is like a for uh, if else sentence in other programming language. So let's try to use the case structure inside LabVIEW. So we find this case structure in the structure palette. And here we use the case structure. And you see, uh, by default, it has a true and false. And then you can use this question mark uh, here, either to force the code to go into the um, false case or in the true case. So just uh, let's add some code here. We can just type, uh, use a button or something, uh, a, a dialog here, pop-up dialog. So let's just add some message here. So here we can, in the false, we can uh, type um, Volvo in the false. And in the true case, we can add uh, enter another value, Ford or something. And then we can wire something here. So let's just have a, um, a push button or something, which could be either true or false. And then we can wire this on to the question mark like this. And now, if this button is false, it should go into this code and pop up Volvo. If this button is uh, true, it should pop up with Ford. So let's try the code. No, it's false. Let's run the code. And it says Volvo. You can just click OK. And you can change it to true. I'll run it once more. And it says Ford. So that's how we create uh, case structures inside LabVIEW. So the input, also, it doesn't need to be a Boolean. We can replace this one with a string or something. So you can find a string control, and then we can wire the string control to the question mark, and you see it automatically changes to a string variable. So now we can enter some other value here. In the false, we can replace it with uh, Volvo, and in this, uh, this one, we can change it to Ford. No. So now if we enter Volvo in the string and run it, it goes into the Volvo case. And if we enter Ford and run it, it goes into the Ford case like this. So this is how we use uh, case structures in uh, inside LabVIEW, and we can use different kind of uh, variables here, either boolean, string, or other types. Another handy uh, structure in LabVIEW is the sequence structure. So we have two types of sequence structure: the flat sequence structure, uh, where we see the different frames. So this is the first frame running, and this is the second frame running. Or we have the stacked sequence structure, where we have the first uh, frame and the other frames are hidden uh, below here. So let's try this example inside LabVIEW. So inside LabVIEW, we go to our um, block diagram and just create a new blank VI, and we find um, the different here. So here we have the flat sequence. So let's start with this one. So in the beginning, it has just only one frame. So we can click on the border to add frame either after or before. In this case, we af uh, add after. And then you see we have two, two frames. It's just like a movie. So the code inside here runs first, and then it goes to the next frame. So just let, let's add some code. We can just use the same pop-up window. So here, 
just type uh, frame one. And here we type frame two, like this, and then we can run the code. So it go into frame one, and then it goes into frame two, like this. So this is the flat sequence structure. Um, the problem with this one, it takes a lot of space in in your code. So typically, we can right click here, and we can replace it with a stacked sequence instead. So now we see we have the two same frames, but they are um, in different layers. So here we have frame one and frame two. So let's run this code. Frame one and frame two. And so the execution is the same, but it takes a lot less space in your uh, in your block diagram like this. So this is how we create um, these structures inside LabVIEW. So now we have learned some basic programming inside the LabVIEW. Uh, before we end this video, I want to show you some tips and tricks. The first uh, trick is to use the Project Explorer if you create more advanced programs with uh, lots of lots of VI. Uh, using the Project Explorer is a handy way to structure your code. So let's just see how this Project Explorer works. So when you start up LabVIEW, you have the choice either File, New VI, or you can click on this Create Project. And then we can just select a blank project and finish. And this Project Explorer is, is starting up. So this Project Explorer is like the Solution Explorer for those who are familiar with uh, Visual Studio. And here you can just easily add new VIs. And then if you have more than one VI, you can easily structure them inside this uh, Explorer. Another trick is to use the options window in LabVIEW. In this window, you can change lots of the default settings inside LabVIEW. So you just find the options window in the tools options uh, menu in LabVIEW. So let's try this one. Here, we just click tools, options, and this options window pops up where you can set lots of settings uh, in different categories for the front panel, uh, block diagram, etc. So we, here we can tailor made our, our um, uh, environment in LabVIEW, how the front panel should look like and how the block diagram should look like, etc. Another thing you should uh, try to avoid in uh, LabVIEW is so-called spaghetti code. So since LabVIEW is a graphical programming language, with lots of wires and graphical objects, uh, it's, e it's extremely important to have a good structure and clear structure in your program. So let's show some examples. So here we see a bad example. This is a quite advanced program with lots of wiring, blocks, etc. So it's um, very difficult to read the code, to find bugs inside the code, etc. And also here, in this example, this piece of code, it's have been used several times in the program. So in this case, you have you should typically made a sub VI of this piece of code and use the sub VI instead. And here we see a, a, another bad example with lots of wiring and the wires goes everywhere, just like a spaghetti. Here we see an extremely bad example with lots of locks and wiring and it's almost impossible um, to understand this uh, code. So it's important to structure your code, use subvis, um, etc. Here we see another example, this very simple code. It's not very uh, difficult, but even with this simple code, it's getting messy if you don't 
keep the structure in order. So here we have inputs, outputs, etc. And the wiring is going everywhere. But why don't you do, uh, do like this instead? And then the code becomes more structured. So try to avoid spaghetti code. And also here, in this example, we are converting from temperature Celsius to Fahrenheit and do it here. And then we copy the same code here. But why don't you use Sevilla instead? And then the code becomes much easier to understand. And if you find bugs in your formula here, you can just double click and change the formula one place. And the same Sevilla is used here. It's automatically changed, changed, so you don't need to duplicate your code like you have done here. So use Sevillas, and also you should use labels and comments inside your code. And also it's important that the flow goes from from left to right, like we can see in this example. But here the flow goes everywhere. So try to avoid this this kind of code. Labby has also lots of um, uh, keyboard shortcuts you should uh, know about in order to make uh, you more effective. So here you have lots of um, shortcuts. Typically Ctrl N creates a new VI, Ctrl S saves the VI, and then you have of course Ctrl C and Ctrl E to copy and paste objects. Another handy uh, shortcut is Ctrl B when you have made some uh, broken wiring inside your code you can just use Ctrl B to remove all this bad wiring. So you should learn some of these uh, important shortcuts. I guess these are the most used um, shortcuts. So Control B deletes all broken wires in uh, in a VI. So Control plus dot stops a running VI. That's also handy to know about. Control E it toggles you between the front panel and the block diagram. Also, you have Control H, which displays the context help window, which is also handy to use because you can get help on different objects see the inputs and output terminals, etc. And also, to make your code cleaner, you can uh, move the objects using the arrows. But if you click the control buttons in addition to the arrows, it, uh, it moves a little bit faster. And also, if you want to copy objects, you can use control, hold the control button down while you drag the objects with your mouse and then a copy of this object is made. So this, these shortcuts is very handy to know about. So you should try these uh, shortcuts. If you feel you need more uh, training in uh, library programming, I have made lots of uh, training resources. So just go to this link and you find lots of information about Labview, lots of resources, exercises about different topics inside Labview. So here you see the web page uh, for this training. So that's all. So good, lu good luck with your LabVIEW programming.